hi, how are you? I'm Patricia McNeely. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I want to pose a question to you. Can your marriage survive your activation? Can you survive your twin flame activation? Well, the short answer is yes, you can. The longer answer is what the heck am I talking about? So if you are in a long-term relationship, or a marriage. I have a few things to recommend to you and to say to you about this. Now first of all, let me remind all of you, your soul is in charge. Your soul is the one that is driving the timing of when you get activated, when you wake up, how you wake up, etc. There are things that you should be aware of and because it can get very confusing when this happens to people their life gets tumbled around and they start going on that roller coaster ride where things are up things are down i'm here to help steady you and bring some stability to this and some common sense and practicality so what does the activating part mean right in the beginning okay it doesn't matter if you've met someone it doesn't matter if it's coming as like the slow burn awakening where you're burning off some of these old strings of connection with your spouse and you're just like, this marriage isn't working for me anymore. Or I, is this how I'm supposed to live the rest of my life? The rest of my life? No. So what activating means first and foremost is healing. Some healing can begin. Now that healing could be mental, it could be emotional, it could be physical, and it can be all of the above. It's definitely going to be spiritual. Where has your spirit had to be like, I'm out, and there you are as a dispirited, disabused person, unable to really function at an optimal level. So healing. The next thing is strength to get things done. So when you get this infusion of love, that's yours. It belongs to you. That is intended to be the strength that gets things done. Okay? That's not love to take and go willy-nilly with it. Okay? Strength to get things done. The next thing is compassion. And that means compassion for yourself and compassion for others around you. Many times when people go through this, they start experiencing various breakdowns. An ego breakdown, the breakdown of many of their dimensional uh, connections that have supported them really for lifetimes. And now it's going to break down and you may feel like a person who's leaping. And the last thing is more love. You are expanding and increasing your ability to actually hold a much higher vibrational form of love, a level of love that really has not been able to be achieved here. Now it's happening to people all over the place. It is very common to have separate lives when you're in a long-term relationship. If you're in a marriage, separate lives are sometimes the way that people cope with it. It's a coping mechanism. You do this, they do that. Maybe you come together to the world, you're presenting this harmonious and nobody knows what's happening behind the closed doors. What's happening behind closed doors? Sometimes it's a cold war. Sometimes it's a hot war where there's constant arguments. If there are children in your midst, if you have children that belong to you or to your spouse or relationship partner, think about them. Really think about it because did you grow up in a dysfunctional household? A lot of people, you're destined to say the buck stops here and not repeat those patterns. How do you do that? I have the ways to do this through your brand new light body. And yes, it can be done. I've done it and I've helped people do it for years. The next thing is separate bedrooms. People experience a form of bed death. Men do, women do. You can fantasize, you can fantasize about having the perfect lover, but yet in your current reality, you may be having separate bedrooms, separate sex lives, all of that. And I don't recommend incurring more karma. If you're engaging your lower chakras, which is your sacral area, which is your sexual area, or your heart, or you're emotionally being 
you know, what people would call emotionally unfaithful, emotional infidelity, other forms of infidelity. <clears throat> you are not here to repeat these patterns. These patterns are intended to go bye-bye, where we do this in an above-board way, and this is not judgment. What I'm saying is that it sometimes ends the way it starts, and then you're kind of back to square one. So I recommend do it new. Do it a different way. Are you experiencing this? Do you have no sex or occasional sex? Do you sometimes dip your toe in that water with your relationship partner or your marital partner, your spouse? Or do you sometimes come together for mutual relief? I mean, these are the realities. People may not like to hear this put so bluntly, but it needs to be said. Some people are like, well, I trust them. I know where they've been. Uh, at least we kind of know each other. At least we can kind of get off with each other or whatever, except sometimes you cannot. Or is your partner insisting or being demanding or coercing you or guilting you into being intimate and sexual with them? And when you're there, are you sitting there like, did I leave the oven on? I really got to take that load of laundry out of the dryer. Um, Oh, I've got to go pick up a prescription. And your mind and your presence is totally checked out while they're hammering away. That happens, okay? That happens. And some people even gloss it over and think, well, that's okay. Everyone says that the passion leaves during a marriage or long-term relationship. Everyone says that, you know, love is there, but it's a different form of love. You don't love them the same way in the beginning. I'm here to tell you that your activation happens so that you can experience that level of love again and again. Your spouse or your partner cannot hold it. They can't keep it, they can't retain it, they can't sustain it. And you can't either, no matter how you might wish to. So what do you do? You do this work. You do the body work that I'm helping people with so that you're in charge. You are driving the train of your life. You are taking that train out of the station to its next destination. So what are some of the considerations? Let's talk about practicalities. Is this realistic? Now, a lot of times people out there will say, eh, Twin Flames, I don't know if that's a thing or it's got a bad rap. I'm here to tell you that they're doing it wrong. And I know this because many times they've come to me to get them back on track and let them feel. I. It is one of the things in my gift of expertise is to get people to feel the love again and again and again and again because that's what it takes. You have to do it on a daily basis until you're together until such time as you decide you know what your next steps are. Dow's those decisions should be a part of your guidance, a part of your higher guidance. If your mind's filled with stuff, it can't get through. So that is also my gift to help people where it starts getting through. It has to come right through you where you're an open vessel for what is pertinent for you. So are you bringing your karma to full closure, okay? I highly recommend don't incur more karma because people can do that. Can you bring this karma to full closure? Yes, you can, and you can turn your back on it, call it a job well done, and that doesn't even mean you have to be at the point of signing the divorce papers. The other thing I don't like to see people have happen, and unfortunately this happens to a lot of women, they get screwed. They get screwed in many ways during divorce situations. I'm of the mindset that things should be equitable, they should be fair, and they shouldn't be so contentious that you feel like killing that person or they wanna kill you, because that happens too. There are some people that never let go and they will hold on like a lamprey eel, just biting and shredding, and you don't need that. It doesn't need to be that way any longer. How about another practicality? Money and finances. Now here's a red flag. If you've met someone who's not your partner and they're asking you for money, really think twice about that because other things come up. Like how are you gonna hide this? Whose money is it anyway? What are you really enabling with this? Don't do it, just say no. And what you tell that person is you'll sort it out. Put the ball back in their court. They'll sort it out because 
That is another thing. People give money to people who have addictions thinking, well, I love this person. You're just an enabler. That's not love. They're using you. So let's get straight on what's practical and what's reality. How tangled up are you, the department of your house of money and finances? That is also something I know a lot about. I have helped people restructure their things for close to 30 years. And there are considerations and it's individualistic. How do you feel loved with so much going on? That's where my daily practice, my daily routine comes in handy for people. If you're following it, the love gets through. Each day may be different. Each day may have something, but the crises have to diminish and the love has to increase. It's that simple because that is how I get people on track. Feeling like the universe is supporting them. Your partner's not supporting you. Your twin flame isn't there yet. You have to feel like the universe has your back. That is my specialty. I hope you can follow or join. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. I do energy sessions to shift these things. Specifically, all of the things I'm speaking of so that you're loved in many avenues of your life. I hope you have a good day. I hope that this has given you some food for thought and things to do, but join us. And thank you so much. Bye now.